Uh, we're almost out of time, and uh, Roger Moore has so many fans. Uh, he's, uh, his name is synonymous with Simon Templer of The Saint. His new series, which will be on ABC soon, called The Persuaders, is not about encyclopedia salesmen, as I suggested in a previous show. Will you welcome, please, Roger Moore? <laughs> Thank you for having me on your show. <laughs> it was hard for me to break in at any point. As, oh, it's as, all right. You know, so I, no, I think it's a wonderful surprise yeah. that uh, Jonathan now has found whatever happened to V.D. Jones. I think it's great. It's nice <laughs> to welcome you here. Good heavens. Heaven. Have you ever met any of you before? I never know if any of my guests... Uh, Across crowded restaurants. I see. Yeah. It, it is nice to see you without your Thank halo. You. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I always thought you had a terrific shampoo, and that's what that was about. I, when I, I never it is, it actually. Would, yeah. Got rather heavier. You're, <laughs> are, are you glad that the saint is no more? Uh, now that I'm working again, I am. Ah, but there was a time <laughs> there in was there a nasty where... Mo there was a nasty moment when it stopped, yeah. and I got worried I may never work again. You hear actors who've been in a series say, I'll never be crazy enough to get trapped in another one. Yeah, are, you are obviously crazy enough, or uh, don't well, subscribe I like them. to that. I, no, I, like, I love work. You do? Uh, I've done... But that's man-killing work. Up every morning no, at six? No, not really. A lot of people get up at six every morning and go home late at night. <coughs> they yeah. don't get as well paid as I do. You know, it's a great compensation. <laughs> I have so no so guilt it's complex really about it. easier for them, because they don't have those enormous tax problems mm -hmm. and all of that. It's true. If you look at it that way, it is easier. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, what was the film? I missed it. What is the film in which you seduced Elizabeth Taylor? <sighs> oh... Uh... <laughs> Oh, and, that's, that's embarrassing. And did that the was... part call for it, <laughs> I, I guess is what I really want. Well, uh, a number of things called for it. Mm -hmm. No, I, uh, that was my first film. It was embarrassing. It was on last week here in England. What is it? I, I don't know. It was called The Last Time I Saw Paris. Oh, and that yes. was the last time I saw Liz Taylor. <laughs> did you learn anything from working with her? Uh, <laughs> yes, it is nice to be a star. Yeah. Now, I wonder about that, because I have had actors, uh, people giggle at that, but who... Veteran actors have said with Miss Taylor they learned a great deal about screen acting from watching her work. Uh, no, I don't think I, I, I was too much of a novice in the film industry in those days to learn anything. I learned a great deal from the next lady I worked with, which is Eleanor Parker, who was a marvelous actress and, and knew what picture making was about and would take me by the arm and guide me there and say, This is your scene, which never occurred to me before that it was my scene, you know, yeah. make sure that I was in the right place. It's interesting, Dame Sybil Thorndike was here a few days ago and she said she learned a great deal from Marilyn Monroe appearing in a film with her. I would love to have learned a great deal from Marilyn Monroe. Well, you, know, <laughs> you can't have everything, True. certainly. Um, so can I ask Mr. Powell one question that I'm, I was busting to ask you earlier, and I, pardon me for changing the subject back again, but in America we're obsessed with whether the press is accurate or not. And that example that I referred to earlier in your speech that inflamed a lot of people about the, the lady who had so much trouble, a lady who ran a boarding house, and as the population became increasingly uh, black around her, her problems increased and so on. And, and you used her as a very vivid example in your speech. Some reporters then tried to find this lady, and she had apparently vanished from the face of the earth. Uh, I've never betrayed my sources. Ah. That's a good press rule. It is. But that, that's, that appears in a book in which you, I was told, checked the manuscript, that this lady was never, they were never able to find her. Well, naturally uh, not. Whenever I produce mm -hmm. a, a specific example from my correspondence, uh, then, of course, I make sure that it can't be identified. I have no right oh. to invade the privacy of somebody who, as a correspondent or even as a constituent, mm -hmm. gives me facts about their own life. But you had named the town and the neighborhood, and it would have seemed like it would have been rather. No, easy. I didn't name the neighborhood. I named the town. Ah. It wasn't during the time of the postal strike. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you so at the press? Uh, generally, do you feel you get a fair shake from them? Well, uh, uh, one of the most miserable things is a politician complaining of the press. Yeah. It's like a ship's captain complaining of the sea. Uh, the press is part of his element. Uh, the idea of complaining of it is absurd. Right. You do your best with the press, and it's up to you to get the results from it that you want, like a man playing a musical instrument, or as I say, like a man sailing a ship. Mm -hmm. All right, and we, after this message, we'll be right back. During the break, Roger Moore was dabbed by the makeup lady for perspiration, and ladies in the audience, 
moaned and went <laughs> and... <laughs> What on earth is it? Uh, what is it that we don't have? We were all similarly dabbed and there was no moan. <laughs> Body odor. It was the girls wanting the dab. <laughs> what? You explain that seriously. You must think about it. You can't just accept a thing like that without thinking about it. Uh, why not? What have you, you know. got? I don't see anything. Lifts, padding, lifts. Really, I, I thought, I've always thought you looked a lot like me, and uh, I don't know what it is. We are similar. Yeah. What are you going to do in your new series? Are you going to do anything saintly in this new series? I hope not. No, we're trying to be different. Uh, you, you had Tony on last week, Tony Curtis, yeah, who's doing yeah. the show with me. And uh, it's the story of an English lord, the adventures of an English lord and an American millionaire. Tony Curtis plays an English lord. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, <yeah. laughs> you, You're very calm and very cool, and you always are in performance. Because uh, I'm drunk is... most of the time. <laughs> is that all it is? It's a champagne blue. You know, success can come to anybody with a nice bottle of Dom Perignon. Well, I'm going to start then. Uh... You're supposed to be one of the wealthiest actors in, in the business. Did, did I detect a cringe when I mentioned <laughs> yeah. that? Well, I, it's I, all I right. really this, said you're supposed to be. It's all right. Tax inspectors you're... don't watch this in America. No, I not think our not. tax inspectors. I think not. That's a terrible thing to say to anybody who's the wealthiest. I'm not. Well, I didn't think you were. That's why I asked. If I thought you were, I wouldn't embarrass you with it. I just said you're supposed to be one of the wealthiest. You saw me ride in on my bicycle. <laughs> If you had any class, you'd have sent a car. <laughs> but with a chauffeur on the handlebars, that's ridiculous. <laughs> so it isn't grueling doing a television series, in spite of the fact that most people who do them... No, because, you know, I, I find working up. fun. I, I, I love being in a, tele you know, in a film studio. I love yeah. making pictures. I don't mind what I'm doing. I don't mind sweeping floors, anything. I just like to be there. I like the atmosphere. And I'm happy, you know, Go I'm on. happy amongst my friends. Showbiz is in your blood? Uh, now it is, yes. Yeah. Didn't used to be. By the way, I'm worried about India being lost. It's not lost. I know where it is. <laughs> My mother was born there. Was he listening? I got, well, I was nodding off from time to time. Not lost in that sense. Let me explain it to you. It's uh, actually east of Africa mm -hmm. and west of Ceylon. Hmm. Were you a good student in school? A terrible student. Were you? Mm -hmm. They were glad to get rid of me. No, I, I was a very lucky student. I've always looked. You know, it's the calm thing of looking as I am listening. Yeah. And they always thought I was terribly intelligent because I never asked questions and I just looked. They, and they thought he knows listener. it all, yes. Yeah. Did I you have a box against someone with sort of this coloured hair? <laughs> <laughs>